Howdy, it's Tubal Cain again. It's Groundhog Day here in Illinois, and I don't think the groundhog made a shadow. But other than that, I thought I'd talk to you about another a little bit of old technology today, and that is uh, the use and care of reamers. Reamers can be your best friend. There are many different kinds. As I'm panning across here, just a, a very small selection of what I've got in my shop. And, uh, well, here's yet another box of them, unsorted. And another drawer over here with some reamers. But, uh, what I really wanted to tell you today, and I'm going to divide this video into two, and the first one will be a discussion of the different types of reamers, and then the second one I'll actually ream some holes on the lathe, and maybe some on the drill press as well. Because reaming can be done on any machine, and also by hand. It's important to remember that reamers are not hole makers. That is, you must drill a hole first, and a reamer only enlarges the hole and brings it to the true size. When you drill a hole, you are never getting an accurate hole in diameter. That is, if you drill a half inch hole, and you are very carefully uh, measure it with a micrometer and a gauge and everything, you're going to find out that it's not really half inch or it won't be consistently half inch if you drill a series of them. It's going to depend on how sharp the drill bit is. But a drill bit sharpens with, the, uh, pardon me, a drill bit cuts with the end or the lip of the cutting tool. Reamers cut on the sides. They do not cut on the end. They are used only again to enlarge a hole and bring it to its finished size. So always drill your hole uh, one or two sizes smaller than uh, your finished size. That is to say, if you're going to drill a, uh, you want to ream a half inch hole, you're going to drill it uh, the next size smaller, which is 31 sixty-fourths. Okay, let's talk about hand reamers. Hand reamers can be identified by the fact that they always have a square shank on the end and they can be turned with oh, a crescent wrench or a tap wrench of different styles depending on the size. Here we have a rather large reamer that's inch and a quarter and of course you would have to have a mighty big tap wrench so I would use a crescent wrench on that. And uh, you never run these under power. We'll, ta we'll uh, ream on the lathe with them, but we'll uh, have the spindle locked and we'll turn the uh, reamer with a wrench. Uh, there's a little bit of a taper on the end of each one of these so you can get them started into the hole. Now when you uh, check these for size, the larger ones are, of course are going to be stamped as to the size, but uh, the smaller ones uh, you're going to have to mic. But when you check these with a micrometer, stay away from the end. Get down here where it's sharp and you need to rotate that just a little bit in between the anvils of the uh, micrometer to get uh, the largest reading on them. You want to be careful not to damage your reamers because they cannot be sharpened. If they were sent to a shop to be sharpened and they did sharpen them, they would have to sharpen them to uh, the next size smaller or uh, you certainly aren't going to get a reamer that uh, is, no, is the original size. So generally we have to throw them away. These reamers are Morse taper reamers. Some of them are hand reamers, square shank, and some of them are uh, machine reamers because they have the tapered shank. But these are used to uh, produce a, uh, a hole that is a uh, Morse taper. And uh, we got several different sizes here starting with a 1 and 2 and a 3 and I think this, this big one here is a 5. These are kind of expensive. You can use these uh, in your lathe to uh, clean up the tailstock quill. Or if you have uh, drill sleeves that are all gnarled up inside, uh, you can clean them up with, with these. They're handy to have around the shop. 
Okay, here's some machine uh, reamers. And the sizes that I use the most in the shop, the smaller sizes starting at eighth inch and working on down to about uh, half inch, I keep in a, in a stand here so they're always handy for me. And uh, like I say, those are the ones I use the most often. But I have many, many more in drawers. And machine reamers can be used in a drill press or in a lathe. If they're a straight shank, then you just hold them in a drill chuck like you would a, a drill bit. But some of them are taper shank and then it would be held in a, directly in a, a tailstock quill. Or if you're doing it on the drill press, they'd be held right in the uh, Morse taper uh, spindle. Most reamers that you're going to find are what we call straight flute reamers, like the one in my hand. That's for general purpose use. They also make a spiral fluted one, and I don't have many of these, but I did manage to dig one out. But if you're ever going to ream a hole out, clean up a hole that is, let's say, in a pulley or a sprocket where there is a keyway, you want to uh, use a spiral one, and then it can span the keyway. Otherwise, as you run a straight one through a hole with a, a keyway, it's going to kind of go yugga dugga dugga, and it's not going to uh, uh, do much. Also, make sure you, you remove the set screw from the uh, item that you're reaming out. These are real handy to clean up a hole, and you can just do that by holding the reamer and maybe holding the pulley in your hand, because often the inside of a, of a hole gets galled up, and all you got to do is, is ream it out. Be sure and run your reamers at a slow speed and always use plenty of lubricant and uh, so you preserve them. They are expensive. The ones that are painted orange here are ones that are one thousandth under. There's a half, uh, five eighths, and a three quarter, and each one of those is one thousandth under. And that's why years ago I painted these orange for a special job because sometimes you're wanting to ream either undersize or oversize. Reamers are available in uh, decimal sizes, fractional sizes, numbers, letters, metric, and in fact any other size that you would order. Uh, they would make up for you, but there would be a premium charge. But if you look through your catalogs like J&L, you're going to find a vast array, pages and pages of reamers. These are all made of high-speed steel. They do make carbide ones as well, but you'll pay a premium a big premium for carbide reamers.